Today we will continue to lay the groundwork in our feature, Blame Game Victims, challenging the four invaders hidden within us. Today's title, What You See Is Not Always What You've Got. If you're a basketball fan, or even if you're not, I'm sure you'll recognize the name Pistol Pete Maravich. He was an amazing player and treated the court like it was a stage. Fans love to watch him play. He was a great showman and a master of the behind-the-back, over-the-shoulder, look-away pass. He always said if given the choice to do the show or play the game as normal, and we get the basket either way, I'll always do the show. Even though Pete was an all-time leading scorer, make no mistake about it, the fans came to watch his gamesmanship. He made defenders look foolish with his skillful dribbling techniques. At a summer camp, he was assured that he did not have to use flamboyant passes to succeed. Pete responded that he wanted to be a millionaire. He said, and I quote, they don't pay you a million dollars for two-hand chess passes. End of quote. His Division I scoring records while playing for LSU still stand today, and when he played for the NBA, he was selected to five All-Star teams and was later voted among the league's 50 greatest players in history. Sporting long, shaggy hair, wearing his socks that looked two sizes too large, he was thin and in fantastic physical shape. He appeared to never wear out or tire, as he impressed the fans with his street ball style. But on January 5, 1988, a few years after retirement, while playing basketball with friends, Pistol Pete collapsed and died of a heart attack at the age of 40. The autopsy revealed that he died because of a previously undiagnosed congenital heart defect. Based on stories like those of Pistol Pete and Reggie White, who seemed to be in perfect physical condition, yet tragically and suddenly dropped dead of a heart attack at young ages, reveal, they reveal a sobering truth. Physical prowess is not always a reflection of the health of one's heart can be fatal to assume too much about a person's cardiovascular health by simply observing the person's physical abilities. On the other side of the coin, you may know someone who eats on a terrible diet. We've all seen them. They live on soda and donuts, yet their hearts are in excellent condition. Despite the neglect, it just keeps on ticking. What's going on outside is not always a good indicator of what's going on inside. In our previous session, we talked about the fact that when you have a heart problem, you don't necessarily know you have a heart problem. Sometimes the symptoms you have are not reflective of heart problems, and at other times there are no symptoms, uh, uh, noticeable symptoms at all. While treating apparently unrelated symptoms of the more fortunate patients, heart problems may be uncovered. It is rarely the case whereby the cardiologist is consulted first. Normally, it's the family doctor that refers the patient to the cardiologist. When things are not right, our bodies give us, give us distress signals. The signals are usually loud and clear and should not be ignored. They can, however, be misinterpreted or misread. The Bible puts forth a similar concept related to the health of the intangible heart. If in the Bible, many evils are attributed to our other heart, Things we would not normally associate with our hearts. We tend to reach for remedies to relieve the symptoms, but rarely deal with the root problem. And as a result, the symptoms linger. Let's look at a quick illustration. So imagine that you just purchased a home, and in the backyard, you have fruit trees and a lot of them. Now, while this may be nice, depending on the type of fruit you have and the amount of fruit produced, the amount of uh, the type of tree and the amount of fruit produced, you may be confronted with problems. So let's go with pear trees for illustration purposes. You have wonderful, healthy trees with an abundance of pears produced. Sounds good, right? Well, think about the vast amount of pears that fall to the ground. Think about how hot it gets in the summertime and how that when you walk through the yard, your shoes get transformed into magnets for mushy, smashed pears. Think about the problems you will encounter when mowing the grass, which is covered in pears. Think about the terrible smell of those as those pears rot in the summertime sunshine and the bugs this process will attract. One good thing, though, 
the grass dies, so your mowing duties may be diminished. <laughs> what are your options? Let's see. You could pick up all the pairs, and this may work as a short-term fix, but even if you made it through the current season, you would have to deal with this issue again next year. But to eliminate the problem for good with no future occurrences, you would have to opt for a more permanent solution. As temporary as the first solution is, it is the same type of approach that we use to handle our heart problems. We keep apologizing for our misplaced words and bad behaviors, consistently announcing to ourselves and those around us that we won't let it happen again. And we may actually mean it, but, and this is a big but, we will then manage to repeat the same mistakes again and again and again. We keep pick, picking up the same pairs and loading our baskets over and over and over again. Each time, we may even get better at it. You know, we start explaining why it's, why it's so hard for us to break these habits. We will cite things like our parents, yada, 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 or uh, uh, the pressure we have at work, yada, 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 and we go on and on in a vicious blaming and explaining cycle. Does anything ever change? The answer is no. The only solution that will stop your yard from being overrun with pears is to dig up the tree by the roots. By effectively dealing with the source, you've dealt with and eliminated the problem. Simple solution, right? It's the obvious one. So what's the source of the inappropriate behaviors and hurtful words that litter the ground around you? The ones that fell out of your mouth and were produced by your hands. All those things that you continue to mop up and explain away. What is the source? And, as you think about that question, think about this one as well. What's the solution? If the source was obvious and the solution easy, you would have conquered it by now. So I ask you again, what's the source and what's the solution? Let's look at these questions from a little bit of a different angle. Have you ever said something that you thought you would never say and then cover your mouth? Or maybe you've even explained, exclaimed, where did that come from? People may have looked at you wondering the same thing. Wow, where did that come from? You may think that this was an exception, and maybe it was. It may very well be that it was an exception to your general rule of not saying what you're thinking. In other words, not letting the world in on what's going on in your heart. Could it be that this embarrassing outburst was not an exception? but rather a reflection of what's really swirling around in your heart. We have all gotten very good at covering for our hearts. So good, in fact, that we have no idea how bad we really are. Then every once in a while, our, our heart goes public. Oh, we didn't mean it, right? No, the truth is, we just didn't mean to say it. In the movie Liar Liar, Jim Carrey played the part of a pathological lying attorney whose son wishes that his father would tell the truth for one whole day. This becomes a reality and for 24 hours it becomes impossible for him to tell a lie. Suddenly his heart is completely exposed. The filter comes off his mouth and it being his most valuable asset begin, becomes his biggest liability. Cover-ups become non-existent, and he is fully exposed. This was a movie, but what if this suddenly happened to us? What if we couldn't hide and cover up our junk from the rest of the world any longer? This would most likely force us to get motivated to deal with the sources of our issues. If the filters came off, we would vigorously reprioritize our attempts to fix the conditions of our hearts. We are not just limited to surprising words. Have you ever caught yourself doing something you know you shouldn't do? Something that you are dead set against and would condemn anyone else who did the same thing? I'll go out on a limb here and say most of us have. We do it and then for some reason we're surprised and say to ourselves, why did I do that? So again I ask the question, what is the source? Oh, of course, maybe the devil made you do it. Then you could deflect responsibility, and with it, the blame. The Bible would have us think differently and points us elsewhere. Oh, it would be nice to be able to deflect the blame, because then we wouldn't have to admit that we have heart problems. It would be much easier to attribute our, our occasional slip-ups to behavioral issues. 
I mean, after all, we're all in the same boat, right? But a heart issue, man, that's deep and it really hurts. Am I really that bad? Do I need rehab? Andy Stanley wrote that, wrote that he had worked with high school students for 15 years and remembered that many times that he counseled parents whose kids had gotten into trouble. Inevitably, the parents would say something like, he's a good kid, he's got a good heart, he just got into a little trouble. Wrong. The bottom line is that he's not a good kid. Good kids do good things. The reality was their child's heart was fouled up. The kids had heart problems, not just behavior problems. The parents who recognized the root problem and responded accordingly were always rewarded with improvement in their child's behavior. The parents who would not allow themselves to face the painful truth found themselves dealing with the same kind of issues over and over and over. Putting kids on restriction does nothing for their hearts. It just delays further problems. Now, getting back to you. The people around you may know something that you are not aware of yet. The ones closest to you catch all the crap that explodes out of you when you fail to maintain the norm of keeping things hidden. You see, what's going on in your heart comes out at home when the safety's turned off and you let your guard down. This is when your heart exposes its ugliness to the people you care most about, those you love. So what's the solution? We definitely need to change and from the inside out. Guarding our behavior more closely will not help. Our words and actions are simply a gauge of what's going on inside of us. They indicate where we are, where we aren't, and where we are headed. The real problem is with our heart. This is where the change must take place. Must take place. Join us next time when we'll continue to lay the groundwork for this exciting study.